Hello and welcome to another video. As you guessed from the title, there's going to be big changes. So this is what the layout looks like at the moment. It's all being dismantled. And that's because I've decided to redo it yet again. But this time, what I'll do is have the boards the correct size that I want, rather than having pieces joined together. And use a lot more brace, and as you can see, from this board, yeah, it's warped quite bad. That one there, it warped quite bad, so I had to put in a whole load of screws, but it's still pretty bad. And this one here, it was, it, was, it was actually okay. It was one of the better ones, but it was never really wide enough for what I needed. It had another piece added onto it, but for some reason, even though there's both both of them are supposed to be nine mil ply, it was a little bit thicker. So then, at, on one side, it to be packed up for the track, and that was where the fiddle yard was. So it never really worked right. Trains were they could run over it, even though it only had the fiddle yard there for a short time. It just yeah, it wasn't right. And where there's two pieces put together, I had to have extra bars like this going across to hold them together and keep them level. And again, it just didn't really work well. And it seemed a shame to get rid of all of these boards, as they were the layout. And apart from a few bracing issues, they were pretty good. So I had an idea, how about, being that they're not quite wide enough for what I want, but plen there's plenty of width in them for a good sized fiddle yard, even though just about make out where the tracks were, so it'd come in here and then go out along there. Even if I was to add another track on that side, being I'd have space, that track would end up being shorter. The further you go out, the less space you have because you need to come back in at the other end. So, as much as that would work, I could have a lot of space. I was thinking, okay, then do that and have it underneath the main layout. So I can have the main layout full width as one board. And I can have all of that scenery and build a helix to go down to this level, which would be for a fiddle yard, which would be, yeah, it's a great idea. But the top board, which would be the main layout, layout would be wider, which then means this Ethan needs to have its own legs and supports built into the main layout or suspended from it. Now, if I have it built underneath it with its own legs and supports, that reduces storage space for boxes or anything else to go under the layout. If I have it so it's suspended from the main layout, that's that would work. But then there's a risk of over time the main layout warping and sagging down with the weight of this underneath it. So it was a hard decision, but I thought, you know what? It, it was never right. It was always fix this. Oh, it's okay. Fix that. And just keep fixing things. So now this, the decision is just get rid of it, start afresh, make sure I have everything as wide as I want, built to the way I want it, and go from there. If I do need to add anything, being I've got a wider baseboard, I can add it rather than what I'd done with this, which was, which was just get what I could, because at the time I, I didn't have a vehicle, so... Yes, it might sound quite silly, but these big boards were carried on a bicycle from a DIY shop at Ball's Way Home. Yes, I could have got delivery, but that would mean time, waiting at home for a delivery and all sorts of other issues. Whereas if I just went there on my bike, as awkward as it may have been, I could go in, pick up what I want, leave when I want, everything is there. And the main benefit of it is I could see the boards and all of, like, say, these wooden pieces myself. I could pick them out 
as there's been multiple complaints about getting things delivered and finding out. Instead of it being straight, it's pretty much like a half moon shape. And then you can't really do much about it. So I'll show you the idea I had for the fiddle yard. Well, it would have been similar to this, although this would have been an underneath view, as you can't exactly see through the boards. So this one here, this top one, would be the fiddle yard underneath. And then this one here, as you can see, it's wider. You could have all scenics there. And where these tracks come down. Come round here, you can just have a helix spiralling round down to this board, which would give a good amount of track space. This here, and lighting's quite bad, sorry. There's about six tracks there, which would have been good. So you could have six tracks underneath and a full width scenery area on top. But then I thought of another issue that I could have. Using a helix, it's been known to cause problems in both N gauge and double O, HO, or quite a few scales, trains being able to get up to them. So I could just have the helix smaller. So if I have it smaller, the gap between the main board and the fiddle yard area would be smaller. Well, well obviously it would be. But if I've got tracks going quite far across, about six tracks, well, that's going to be difficult to clean and put trains on and off. And if anything happens, like a derailment, there's a small gap between the two boards. That's going to be a problem. Well, then build a bigger helix. A bigger helix means very few trains will be able to get up there. Not all locals have traction tyres. I know you could add traction tyres or... There's a product called Bullfrog Snot, which you can add. It's like um, a liquid plastic or liquid rubber that you can add, which creates traction tyres. But what you gain in traction tyres, you lose in connectivity to the rails. So it was always going to be a 50-50 gamble whether the train could even run. And also the higher it goes up, the helix, the more drag there is. So shorter trains, which... In that case, why have such a big fiddle yard if you can only run, run a loco of two or three coaches? Seems pointless. So the next idea would be to build a big helix, but with multiple spirals or quite a few close together, which would be diff a bit difficult to clean. But if it's not as steep, there's better chances of running trains up there. Which then, in turn, means, yes, I can have a big layout on top, a fiddle yard below. But again, it's how are you going to support both of them? So, completely scrap that idea. And now I'm in two minds of still having two levels, but the fiddle yard would be as wide as the main board. So the whole thing creates a box. So all of it is... Equal all the way around, even if well, have alongside. In terms of support and weight distribution, all of it will be equal. And if I have enough space, I can clean everything. Now, usually, a fiddle yard would just be on one side of, like, say, your layout. You'd have a scenic divide and then scenic area. If I have it full width, both levels, what I can do... I can work out a way to build a helix. I might just have a trial run before I actually do anything major. What I could do would be to have a fiddle yard, like say on this side, which just has um just looking like a normal yard. Maybe ballast it so it looks right and have a fence between, like say, the main running lines. And then over here, have a scenic area. Then goes into a tunnel up the heat legs, and then on top have the main layout. So it might be quite dark underneath, but then if I just have some lights, you could essentially have two layouts, one low level and one upper level. Which in theory would work in terms of 
supporting the boards and weight. But then it does again come down to having um, a good enough helix to be able to do that. One idea I had was to start the tracks, like say there, and come all the way around, as the new boards would be wider, and then go up like that, using Woodland Scenics risers. So that would work to some extent, but I think, again, there's not really going to be much clearance between, say, the two boards. I'm not 100% sure how tall the Woodland Scenics risers are, but I'm guessing to be able to realistically get your hand underneath to clean tracks, reach trains, I would need something a bit bigger or a very wide board to be able to do that. So I'm guessing for this um, video it is just to say these old boards, they're going to be, be taken to the wood recycling place, get rid of it, start afresh, nice wide boards with good supports underneath. There's some of the pieces I was using. It was like it was like that. It's not two by one, it's close but not quite. That's a two by one. And there's a considerable difference between the two. Yes, I'm not really going to like expeditions and shit and train shows, things like that. The layout's not really being moved. So, yes, I could have got away with this, but it turned out I couldn't. Because things just didn't really work out that well. And where this is so thin, it was actually quite difficult to get a decent screw in without it splitting. Even if I pre-drilled the hole, there just wasn't really anything there. And I'd found um, these just um, in one of the bins in a hardware store. I think there was like originally for some kind of pallet or whatever it was. They're nice and strong and treated. Not quite two by one. You can see they're a little bit shorter. And again, it's, it was close, but not quite right. For small pieces, say cross members with um, a centre beam going across. So, for argument's sake, split it like that. It worked all right, but I was never really happy because I, I knew it wasn't quite thick enough. So, again, the whole lot is just going to be yeah, taken away and rebuilt. Thank you for watching. And if you've got any comments or any questions, feel free to add them. And subscribe, please. Thank you. Goodbye.